I'm Mr. Miller. Hi, I'm Mr. Moss. Hi, I'm Miss Whitehead. We're excited to share with you some important information about the founding of the Plymouth Bay Colony. We in the United States of America have many things to be grateful for. We have the privilege of living in a free country. We're able to act and think as we please. And we live in a country which provides us with many economic opportunities. Much of the time, we take these things for granted. Life here has not always been filled with so many freedoms and comforts. Many had to sacrifice to allow us to reach this point in our country's history. In this video presentation, we'll explain the beginning stage of this country and the rights that come with living here. Before we begin, we must explain some important vocabulary words which will be used in this video. The first word is colony. A colony is a group of people who travel to a foreign country to establish a new town or city. The next vocabulary word is freedom. This is the power to think and act without control from any outside influences. Independence is our third vocabulary word. Independence is very similar to freedom. It means that we do not depend on anyone else to control or govern us. Next, we have the term New World. When Christopher Columbus found the Americas, this was very new and exciting. This was a land that was previously unknown to the Europeans. They called this new land the New World. Our last important term is Wampanoag. This is a Native American tribe that lived in the area of Rhode Island and Massachusetts when the Plymouth Colony was first found. In the early 1600s, many people were unhappy with their lives in England. Many of these English citizens had decided to leave the Church of England, which led to persecution. They felt that their freedom was being taken from them. This group eventually decided to set sail to the New World in order to gain some independence from the King of England and worship however they pleased. The first group set sail in 1620 aboard a ship called the Mayflower. The group landed in an area along the east coast of what is now known as the United States. They eventually docked at Plymouth Rock in December and settled in this area. Not all went smoothly for this first group of settlers. In fact, of the 100 members of this first group, more than half died of disease exposure their first winter. It was a struggle to find food. Eventually, the colonists were able to make peace with the local Indian tribes, known as the Wampanoag. Luckily for the colonists, the group was able to befriend Squanto, a Native American who was a member of the Wampanoag tribe. He became a great friend of the colonists, serving as a translator and teaching them to hunt, fish, and plant corn. It was with the Wampanoag that the first Thanksgiving was shared in the fall of 1621. Eventually the colony became stronger. Three more ships came in the following years. Their success led to more colonies founded in the New World. This led to the future founding of the United States of America almost 160 years after the founding of the Plymouth Colony. Here are some things to think about. How do the Plymouth colonists' desire for freedom lead to the freedoms we share today? And what can we learn from the colonists and the Wampanoag when working with others?